1945 and Germany has lost World War II, with them lost the Austrians having found themselves thoroughly Anschlussed in 1938. Austria was occupied by Allied forces much in the same way that Germany was. The Soviet Union was placed in control of this territory and the United States, Britain and France getting the rest. The Allies had declared Austria to be the first victim of Nazi aggression and thus they technically weren't occupied but were liberated. From a social standpoint, post-war Austria was in a strange place. Whilst the referendum to join Germany in 1938 wasn't exactly a fair one, many in Austria did wish to remain a part of Germany and were still sympathetic to National Socialism. In the Soviet occupation zone, life for Austrians was miserable. The Soviet soldiers were responsible for about 90% of all crime in Austria in the years following the war. Furthermore, the USSR also relocated much of Austria's wealth away from the country by moving factories and seizing Austria's oil. In the western occupation zones, things were better. They generally ruled with a light touch and when a bad winter wrecked harvest and the Austrian economy crashed, they gave economic aid. However, this wasn't exactly a wholly benevolent gesture. The Cold War was just beginning and so the Western Allies were seeking to win over the Austrians to their way of life and deprive the Soviets of what would likely become another puppet state. This fear of communism spreading was important when deciding the fate of the former Austrian province of South Tyrol. The Austrians and the majority of the people living in South Tyrol were hoping that the two would be reunited as they were before World War I. The British and Americans were deeply concerned that taking too much territory away from Italy would increase the popularity of the Communist Party there and so South Tyrol remained a part of Italy. The Soviets had at first placed a socialist, Karl Renner, in charge of Austria. When the nation went to the polls in late 1945, the Conservatives under Leopold Feigl won. Feigl decided to present a united Austrian front to the occupiers and invited the Socialist Party to form a unified government with Adolf Schärf as Vice-Chancellor. Austrian leaders now denounced the notion that Austrians were somehow German, despite the fact that Renner had been very pro anschluss before. In fact, the notion of Austrians not being Germans led to many German Germans being kicked out of the country, whereas many non-German Germans, like those who lived in the Sudetenland, were allowed to move to Austria. Austria also went through the process of denazification, which saw half a million of Austria's former Nazi party members placed onto a national register. In 19 in 1948, the process of denazification was ended when the majority of low-ranking party members were given amnesty. The amnesty was largely a political move, since those 500,000 former Nazis made up a large voting bloc and both main parties wanted their votes in the future. That said, even with amnesty, most former Nazis were forbidden from holding political office. By 1949, the Austrian government wanted their occupation to come to an end. This didn't happen because Cold War. The problem with pulling out of Austria was that there was a potential for them to fall into either the Soviet or American alliances. Austria was itself a Western democracy democratic nation, but one that was all too aware of the fact that communist Yugoslavia, Hungary and Czechoslovakia lay on its borders. It was Austria's position between the two ideological blocs that forced its government to be a perpetual coalition of the conservative Austrian People's Party and the Social Democratic Party. Internal party squabbling ended up getting rid of Feigl and he was succeeded by Julius Raab, who made sure to improve relations with the USSR. Raab began talks concerning Austria's independence with the Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov and its new leader Nikita Khrushchev. In 1955, the state treaty was signed and it was agreed that in return for the withdrawal of Soviet and Western forces, Austria would ban all fascist parties and was forbidden, under any and all circumstances, to ever, literally ever, unite with Germany. It was also tacitly agreed that Austria would become a neutral, non-aligned nation. This set the stage for Austria's place in the Cold War and the modern era. It would be a nation whose past was to largely be ignored for the meantime and whose newfound neutrality would soon go on to shape its national identity. Perhaps the most important legacy of the decade after the Second World War was that Austrians would be Austrian. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching, and a special thanks to James Bizonette, Azarka Flash, Henry Rabin, Winston Kaywood, Adam Harvey and Sky Chappelle.